no talking, no electronics, no reading, no writing, you're just by yourself, you have no outside noise, no distractions whatsoever, the only thing you really have to do in the day is meditate. It really makes you question, who are you? I would describe the entire experience as being one of the most healing, cleansing and purifying experience I've ever had in my entire life. Everyone's experience is unique. Some people will go and they will try it and they will realize it's not for them. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience going on a 10 day Vipassana silent meditation retreat in Thailand. Now, I know you probably have many, many, many questions. Why on earth did I decide to go on a 10 day silent meditation retreat? How did I manage to stay silent for 10 whole days? What was it like? What did I experience? I know there must be so many questions and I hope in this video I can answer them. Now let's start with the first question. Why did I decide to go on a 10 day of a personal silent meditation retreat? So to answer it in short, I have always been fascinated by these sorts of retreats. When I ended up in Thailand, I never thought that I would be doing one on this specific trip. It genuinely did not even cross my mind. I was working full time. I was doing a load of things, trying to explore whilst working full time on UK hours. It was very hectic, very crazy. And when I started researching tourist attractions in Chiang Mai, meditation retreats came up because there are so many temples in the north of Thailand. But when I mentioned this in one of my meetings with my boss, he very, very, very surprisingly said to me, if you want to do a 10 day sign meditation retreat, then you can take the time off to do it. So that is essentially how I found myself going and enrolling on a 10 day sign meditation retreat. What is Vipassana meditation? Vipassana meditation is also known as insight meditation and its aim is to develop self-awareness through mindfulness training. I went to the temple Wat Ram Poing in Chiang Mai and the teaching and practices at this temple in particular are based on the four foundations of mindfulness. These are contemplation of the body, contemplation of the feelings, contemplation of the mind, which is thoughts, and contemplation of objects of the mind. What was my experience with meditation prior to entering the temple? The most amount of meditation I had done, about five to 10 minutes every single day, maybe on and off for the past three years or so, but it was never really consistent. It was only consistent, I'd say, in the past six months or so where I would actively consciously every morning just put on a timer for five minutes and just try and sit, close my eyes and just focus on my breathing. That is the extent of my meditation practice prior. And so then going into the temple where we did 10 hours of meditating every single day was a lot. What you'll probably most be interested in is what the rules were that we had to follow because the temple I chose was quite strict. The rules that we had to follow in the temple were no talking, no socializing, no eye contact, no electronics, no reading, no writing, no listening to music, no dancing, no napping. So they were quite strict rules that we had to adhere to as practitioners. We also had to wear white day and night. Women had to have their hair tied up. We also had to wear a white sabai, which is a kind of um, shawl that covers our chest area. And then we also had to undertake eight precepts whilst we were staying in the temple. These were one, no killing, two, no stealing, three, no sexual behavior, four, no incorrect speech, five, no alcohol, six, no eating after 12 p.m., seven, no dancing, singing, music, wearing makeup, perfume, etc. And eight, which again is kind of funny, is no lying on luxurious or soft beds. And when I tell you the bed that we were given, my gosh, it was so hard and so thin and it was to ensure that we just didn't lie in and laze about and that we actually got up because the bed is so hard, you don't want to stay in bed. <laughs> Our daily routine was as follows. We had to wake up at 4 a.m. 4 to 4.30 was kind of get up, get ready. And then at 4.30, all of the foreigners did morning chanting together. The monks and the nuns who were in the temple would do their own separate chanting and they would chant in Pali, the ancient language, and Thai. The foreigners would all congregate in one of the buildings in the temple, which was the library. We had a, an English speaking monk with us and we would all do chanting just in ancient Pali, but would have the English translation with a, with a book. We would all do morning chanting together, which was actually really nice. And then we would all do the morning mindful prostration together, which I can talk about 
afterwards from 5 a.m to 6 30 a.m we were left to do our own meditation practice then 6 30 to 8 was breakfast time there was both thai food and vegetarian food thai buddhists can eat meat so there were meat options the food was very filling very good in my opinion so from 6 30 until 8 that's when we would eat we would wash up after ourselves that's also the time when you would shower when you would clean your room when you would sweep outside the accommodation and also when you would wash your clothes if you needed to because we would hand wash everything from 8 until 10 30 we would again do our meditation practice we were left alone to do this it's just meditation time from 10 30 until 12 was lunch time again exactly the same as breakfast time you would eat wash up clean your room sweep shower if you don't in the morning and wash your clothes if you needed to again you don't have to use the whole time it's a whole hour and a half we get for both breakfast and lunch so you can do more meditation in that time if you want but we get given an hour and a half to do all of those kinds of things if we need to then from 12 we are not allowed to eat anymore for the rest of the day so we are essentially fasting we are allowed to drink liquids though so we can have any sort of drink even fizzy drinks which i was surprised by even coffee again surprised by we're also allowed to have yogurt or ice cream that we could have bought in the shop the temple had an on-site shop which was actually very well stocked so you're allowed to have those things just no edible food no chewy food after 12 pm from 12 until about 3 30 or 4 again meditation time and then from 3 30 slash 4 until about 4 30 is when you would go and report to the head monk who is our teacher you would report to him every day you would update him on your progress how your meditation practice is going whether you have any worries or doubts about things talk to him about any feelings or emotions or anything that came up during your meditation practice and any questions you just had for him and he would answer them he would also help guide you with your meditation practice and then depending on what you said to him he would then help you pro progress to the next stages with your meditation 4 30 until 10 p.m was again meditation time around 5 p.m the temple would bring out a hot drink every evening because there was no dinner so i would typically always go to this and yeah that was essentially our, our day to day we weren't allowed to sleep until 10 p.m sometimes i did sleep later than 10 p.m but regardless you had to wake up at 4 a.m we lived in the temple with the monks as monks you're probably thinking at this point what was my experience like what happened what did i do on day one that was kind of registration day i was shown around the temple by the english speaking monk i was given a tour i was taught all of the procedures and the processes everything that happened in the temple so for example before every single meal we would all chant together and then we were meant to just eat in silence so when we ate we would all sit in absolute silence the females and the males were separated we all sat facing one direction you weren't really with other people you weren't meant to talk to anyone else or look at anyone else you're just meant to focus on your food on the first day again i was taught the whole meditation practice and the technique because as i said it was completely new to me i remember on the first day it was literally the day after chinese new year i had quite a late night the night before i think i went to bed at two and i only got about six or seven hours of sleep so i was really quite exhausted already going in and i think when i got there i was really excited and really intrigued about what was going to happen in these 10 days but when I got there, it kind of hit me what I signed myself up for. And when you first arrive, they take all your electronics away, they lock away your bags and things. You know, I got quite overwhelmed at the prospect of the next week and a half. These are the days that I've kind of noted down were um, significant. So I remember day seven was when the tiredness really hit me because we got max six hours of sleep every night. I usually try and get eight hours of sleep a night. Less than eight, I'm quite cranky. A nine is my optimum, which I very rarely get, but I try and aim for eight. So getting six, a max of six, some nights I got five, was really, really, really tough. So day seven, yeah, the tiredness really hit me and I kind of started to feel very fed up at this stage, kind of felt ready to leave. And that's when I woke up in the morning on day seven, but I went to morning chanting and after morning chanting, I just felt so much better and I didn't want to leave and I was ready to continue. Also during morning chanting, after we'd done the chanting and before we all did the mindful prostration together, 
the English speaking monk would always give some kind of mini Dharma talk, which was always so inspiring and just so lovely. And I really appreciated those. The energy was just so good. And the things he was saying was just so profound and so powerful. And they just really made you think and question everything. And so hearing his little talk and charming together just put me back in the right mindset. And I no longer had those feelings of frustration and feeling like I wanted to leave. And then here I just noted, noted down that day eight, the next day I actually really struggled to focus. And also that day was Buddha day. We didn't have any reporting to the teacher. We had to do extra sweeping and cleaning. And we also had more time to meditate. But also in the evening, there was a really nice ceremony. It was really, really lovely because we were all included in that. The energy at that ceremony was so intense and so powerful and so good. It just felt so lovely to be in that atmosphere. But yeah, my overall experience is that I learned a lot about myself. I would describe the entire experience as being one of the most healing, cleansing and purifying experience I've ever had in my entire life. It's probably time that I have felt at the most peace in my entire life. I was so at peace, so content. I'd almost go as far as to say it's almost the happiest I've ever been in my entire life but in a very different way because you're so disconnected from the world and you have no communication with the outside world, you have no connections with anyone else and you're just with yourself. So I was the happy but happy in a very different way because I think there are very different types of happiness. You know, happiness comes from being connected to people, experiencing things with people, your family, your friends, sharing the love and sharing your experiences with other people. But this was happiness in a different way. It was just a very special experience and one that I think back to very fondly all the time. I learned a tremendous amount about myself. You realize what really truly matters to you. You realize that you are not your thoughts. It's the most out of body experience I've ever had. As I said, there were no mirrors in my accommodation. I just did not know what I looked like. I, I wasn't spending my time worrying about what I looked like. Every day you're wearing the same clothing and wearing white clothing. Women, as I said, have to have their hair tied up, no makeup, etc. nothing, there were no mirrors. So every time I would catch myself in the glass reflection when I was walking around the temple, you know, I'd kind of stop and be like, oh, is that, is that me? It was very strange. And because you're also not talking, the only time you're really talking is when you're reporting to the teacher every day. And then also you were allowed to speak to the nun in the foreign meditation office. And also, as I said, the, the English speaking monk, if you saw them around and had questions, but because you weren't really speaking that much, even when I spoke and opened my mouth and I heard myself, I'd think, oh, is that how I sound? Like, is, is, is that me? And you realize that, you know, it really makes you question, who are you? And when you're meditating, you realize that all of these thoughts come up and they all come up and you realize that you are not your thoughts. You can choose which thoughts to accept and which ones to reject. And the whole practice of the personal meditation and I guess a big part of Buddhism is that everything is impermanent. Everything is transient. And so we were taught that when these thoughts come up, and when whatever emotions arise in you, whether happiness, sadness, grief, anger, anything, you allow them, you acknowledge them, you acknowledge that those thoughts or those feelings are there, they're present, you process them in whatever way you need to, and then you just detach from them and you let them go. And what I found was during these hours and hours and hours in the day when you would just be meditating and you'd just be there, with your thoughts by yourself. These thoughts, random thoughts, random memories will come up. I found that so many things came up from my childhood or from my teenage years, things that you don't even realize that you even remember. You know, random things, really random things come up and they come up for a reason and they bring up whatever emotions and you know, you kind of, they come up, you process them, you acknowledge them and then you detach. Which is why I say that it was the most cleansing, purifying experience that I've had because you feel as though you're really purging everything. You know, when you are sitting still with yourself, when you literally have no distractions in the outside world, when you're just isolated, you know, you're in the temple, you're not allowed to leave the temple grounds, you're just by yourself. 
you have no outside noise, no distractions whatsoever, the only thing you really have to do in the day is meditate. And so, yeah, you just, all these things come up and you are just feeling so much more light and so much more free than you ever have been before. And it's incredible, it's the most incredible experience. Yes, there were times when I got angry or I got upset or I got frustrated or I felt really happy. And it's just amazing how each time you're sitting down and meditating, something different comes up. Honestly, it was just an experience that you can't necessarily replicate unless you're in that specific environment where you are literally so far removed from the real world. That is what I would say about my meditation experience. If I've missed anything or I've forgotten anything or you have any questions or you would like me to do a more detailed video I guess with like specific questions with like a Q&A about my meditation practice and my experience then yeah let me know in the comments below I'll do my best to answer them. All I can say is I would highly recommend anyone to go on it. Truly life-changing. I came away with some learnings about myself and about things that are important to me that I've taken through and followed through with and I, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back. I did the 10 day introductory beginner course but I want to go and do their 26 day course at some point next year. Just such a special, special experience and everyone's experience is unique. Some people will go and they will try it and they'll realize it's not for them. Some people leave early. You know, it's not for everyone, but for me it was very special and I would recommend it to anyone. It was very eye-opening and just an amazing, amazing experience. And I also attribute my experience, I think, to the specific temple I went to in Thailand, Wat Ram Poing. Would highly recommend if you ever find yourself in Chiang Mai. It was a very, very, very special temple and I wouldn't go and do another meditation retreat, at least not my next one, anywhere else but that temple. I hope that this video has been interesting and inspiring in some way because I do hope that it will make you consider going and doing one. Thank you so much for listening and for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!